Adele Dickey is a remarkable woman, widowed at a younger age. Adele has been able to share the moving story of her personal losses to audiences worldwide, bringing hope, encouragement, and practical insight to others who need to know that despite life's trials, God's strength can cause us to triumph. Good to have you with us again. Thank you. I can't remember when, but I know that, that uh, we've, <laughs> it's been a few years. We've, we've been here before. Yeah, 2006, our producer said. Uh, Adele, Thanks. good to catch up again. But just uh, uh, let's, let's kind of start from in the big picture of, sure. of uh, your life and story and really just the fact that at every turn, God seemed to be there. Right. Well, I didn't grow up in a home that attended church, so I walked up the street at about the age of six, and a lady invited me in, mm -hmm. and I began to go to church, and at the age of 12, she asked me to go to a church camp, and I went there, and I began a personal relationship with Christ that has changed my life and sustained me through many, many things, mm -hmm. and then I began going to a church and getting a uh, good foundation, and at mm -hmm. the age of 18, on my way to church one evening, a five-year-old little boy ran in front of my car and was killed instantly. Wow, wow. Yeah. Now, just taking a moment to look look at that, uh, you young girl driving, you know, and, and uh, that must have been a devastating thing to try to process and, and make sense of. It was very interesting because that church camp that I went to year after year, mm -hmm. they had you me memorize Bible verses. And I realized at 18 that all the things that I had memorized, I needed to somehow get from my head to my heart. Mm -hmm. And that process took a while. However, God just put the right people in, in my path, and He showed me in His Word His promises. He'd never leave us nor forsake us. And He is our comforter. And I learned so many things during that time. But yes, it did take some processing. I know a, a big part of your ministry deals with the issue of forgiveness. Right. And uh, you know, that kind of a, a seminal moment, uh, you know, accidentally taking a life, how did, how did, how did you kind of uh, discover forgiveness? How did you receive forgiveness? Uh, how did you ask for forgiveness? Yeah, the parents of the little boy that I had hit were Amish and they wrote me a beautiful letter of forgiveness. Mm. And then I realized that I was holding myself um, responsible and I had to realize that it was an accident. Mm -hmm. And I think forgiveness is twofold. Once we, we choose to forgive and then continually a process of letting go each time that comes up. Mm. And so I, it was a process once again of learning to forgive, mm -hmm. choosing to forgive well, Adele, it's, you know, sometimes we say, we play this in our minds that I do forgive myself, mm -hmm. I'm forgiven. But then something else happened in your life years later where you were challenged to go through the entire process again. Tell us about that. Well, actually, after the little boy um, was killed, I married and my husband was, um, after three years, we found out we were expecting a child and my husband was found to have a terminal heart condition. And he, um, they asked us at that time because it was a hereditary possibility for our child if we wanted to have an abortion. Mm -hmm. And we said no. And hiding God's word in your heart is very important when a snap decision needs to come up. So we went through that and he was given seven to 10 years to live. So we had a healthy little boy after nine months and then uh, two years later, had a little girl, and life seemed to be smoothed out pretty well, and I can remember my children were seven and nine, and on the anniversary date of hitting, of the accident of hitting the little boy, I always tried to stay busy on that day, and that day I was out helping my sister, and I came home, and I noticed a bunch of people on the corner, and I asked what had happened, and my own daughter had ridden her bicycle in front of a car mm. and was critically injured. She laid in a coma for five weeks and was in an intensive care unit for three months. And during that time, that was all again, you know, all over the forgiveness. Mm -hmm. People asked me, did you have trouble forgiving the woman that hit your daughter? No. After you've received that kind of forgiveness, mm -hmm. it was very easy for me to um, be able to forgive her. Were mm -hmm. you tempted to believe what the enemy probably told you, which was, this is punishment for what you had yeah. done years earlier. It was interesting, because when I had children, mm -hmm. I, I did have those thoughts of, 
am I going to be paid back? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've been asked that by several people. Did you feel like you were paid back? But by the time that actually happened, God had given me so much mm -hmm. grace and understanding that I realized that we live in a fallen world. Little girls run in front of big cars, they get hurt. Yeah. Um, so God really worked ahead of time. So I was able to let go of that fear. But at one time that really gripped me. So I always say God took my greatest fear, allowed it to become a reality and turned it into a miracle. Mm -hmm. Because after many months, my daughter, um, well, there was a time where my husband collapsed. He was on intensive it care. It was actually while, she, while Melissa was in the coma, right? Right. He was on intensive care in one floor and she was on intensive care in another floor. Wow. wow. And God just really touched the whole situation. And he, my husband was only hospitalized for a few days at that time. And then Melissa was released after nine months. She had to learn how to swallow, how to eat, how to walk, how to talk. But she was hit in the fall and by the end of or by the end of the school year, she had caught up with her class. Uh, going back to uh, that moment and the, the time surrounding, you know, when Melissa's in the ICU and then your husband Steve collapses and he's brought into another ICU unit in that same hospital. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for people today that are going through some difficulties, severe difficulties, uh, pressing, you know, issues mm -hmm. uh, that just seem insurmountable, how did you kind of find peace and how did you find resolve? Uh, to carry through that time? Well, they're, they're, I'm a one, two, three person. Give me the answers. Tell me how to do it. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of tried to look for those for other people even. And I realized that first I needed to totally commit the whole situation to him. Just give it over. Just step back and step right. away. Mm -hmm. And then trust. Mm -hmm. My life verse is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. And that's what I had to do. I, had to, I couldn't lean on my own understanding. I couldn't figure out why all this was happening. I just had to trust. Mm -hmm. And in that trusting, I realized that during the good times, you really have to feed into yourself and you have to have some things in place in our life. We all need those things. And that is daily, get close to the Lord, get into his word, get a great prayer life, spend time in prayer, um, I always say nuzzle up to the Lord because I, I feel comforted by doing that daily. Mm -hmm. And also get people in your life that will help you, um, whether that be your friends that you can talk to, your pastor or a Christian counselor. I'm big on that because suffering's twofold. One, you walk through it and you learn a lot. Two, you, when we reflect back on it, we learn even more. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we need help to do that. Mm -hmm. And so those are some of the things that I learned during that time mm -hmm. and to hold on to his promises. Well, Adele, you know, we were talking in the green room and you just seem to have so much joy and contentment, peace. And, you know, other people have turned to alcohol and drugs when going through a difficult time. What do you say to that person who's struggling right now with something that has been so tragic that they have had to turn to something or someone other than God? I try to get them to see that God is the only answer. Mm -hmm. And the joy I have is amazing of what the Lord's done in my life. And I'm just so grateful for that. But my husband, my first husband, Steve, was an amazing man in the fact that when he was diagnosed and told that he had seven to 10 years, he looked at me and he said, there's a lot of sickness in our home. And for that same amount of sickness, we're going to balance it out with a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. And in Proverbs, it says laughter is good medicine. Mm -hmm. And so I try to, I'm a little off sometimes. I try to make people laugh and, and no matter where I'm at, let's go to the grocery store and make the girl at the counter who's had just terrible people walking through wanting her to rush, make her feel good. You know, let's take time to enjoy each other and love on each other. And for me, that's a key. It's look for, make today count. Make mm -hmm. today count. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest part. Well, we're going to give you an opportunity to make today count. We've got about a minute here, Adele. And if you would just take a moment and pray for friends that are watching. If you're going through some serious situations today and you just feel like you can't get out from underneath the burden, the weight, the Maybe it's an issue of forgiveness. Maybe it's an issue of loss. Maybe it's just an issue of, you know, you're just stuck and you don't know where to go, what to do. Can you pray for our friends watching today? I sure today? can. 
Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace, thanking you and praising you for who you are. And Lord, I just ask for each person that's watching this today, that's going through a difficult time, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would come, adown, come down upon them yes, today, Lord. that they would feel your presence in a new and fresh way. And Lord, that they would be able to, in a new way, look at the day. And Lord, I just pray that you would lighten their burden and put people in their path that can touch their hearts. Lord, may we each take the opportunities that we have as we come in contact with other people throughout the day yes, to touch their hearts and draw them closer and show them you through who we are. Lord, we just thank you and praise you for who you are and what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Adele. Thank you. So glad you could be with us today. And to connect with Adele Dickey, go to adeldickey.com. <laughs> or as always, you can go to our website, harvest-tv.com, and uh, find an easy way to link there. Coming up later, uh, some more prayer requests. We're going to continue to pray. But up next, Brian Bush joins us with Israeli views of the Olympics. We'll be right back.